Did you know that landing a man on the moon was once considered an audacious dream? That's right. It was in 1962 when President John F. Kennedy dared to envision a future that transcended the boundaries of our world. He challenged the nation, setting forth a vision that would not only shift the course of history, but redefine the limits of human achievement. Kennedy's famous moon speech, delivered at Rice University, served as a rallying cry for the nation. His words, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard, inspired a generation and set the stage for the monumental Apollo program. It was an audacious vision, a challenge that dared to defy the impossible. And so the stage was set, the challenge accepted, and the countdown to the moon landing began. In the wake of Kennedy's stirring vision, the Apollo program was born. A tangible manifestation of the audacious dream, the Apollo program was the United States' third human spaceflight initiative. Its inception in the early 60s was driven by a clear objective, to land humans on the moon and safely return them to Earth. The program was more than just a series of missions. It was a rigorous, exhaustive endeavor that involved comprehensive training and preparation. Astronauts were put through physical and psychological tests, trained in spacecraft systems, survival skills, and even geology. The meticulous planning extended to the spacecraft's design, with the Apollo spacecraft being crafted and tested meticulously to withstand the vast harshness of space and the lunar surface. This was a program that embodied the essence of exploration, of pushing boundaries, of daring to venture into the unknown. The Apollo program, a testament to human tenacity and ingenuity, was well on its way to make history. But who were the brave souls who dared to venture into the unknown? Enter Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, the first humans ever to set foot on the moon. Neil Armstrong, a decorated naval aviator, was the commander of the mission. His calm demeanor and quick thinking were instrumental in the success of Apollo 11. Buzz Aldrin, a doctor in astronautics and a mechanical whiz, served as the lunar module pilot. Aldrin's work on rendezvous techniques was a cornerstone of the mission's success. Both Armstrong and Aldrin underwent rigorous training, preparing for every possible scenario. They spent countless hours in simulators, gleaning the skills necessary to navigate and control their lunar module, aptly named Eagle. They carried the weight of their nation's hopes and dreams, the embodiment of a vision set seven years prior. These brave men, Armstrong and Aldrin, were about to embark on a journey that would forever etch their names in the annals of history. But where on the moon were they to land? This question was of utmost importance as they prepared for the Apollo mission. A suitable landing site had to be chosen, one that was safe yet scientifically interesting. The Sea of Tranquility became the chosen one, a vast lunar mare that seemed to beckon from Earth's night sky. The Sea of Tranquility, or Mare Tranquilitatis, was not chosen at random. It was a calculated decision. The area had relatively flat terrain, which was crucial for the lunar module's safe landing. It also had fewer craters and boulders, reducing the risk of a catastrophic collision. But it wasn't just about safety. The Sea of Tranquility also promised scientific bounty. It was believed to be representative of the moon's surface, offering the opportunity to gather significant data and lunar samples. Choosing a landing site on the moon was a task fraught with difficulties and risks, but it was a challenge they were willing to take. The Sea of Tranquility, a beacon of calm amidst a sea of unknowns, was chosen as the landing site. What did the astronauts find when they finally set foot on the moon? As they navigated the lunar surface, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stumbled upon something extraordinary. There, among the moon's dusty terrain, they discovered not one, not two, but three new minerals. One of these was armalkalite, a mineral named in honor of the three astronauts themselves, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Michael Collins, who orbited above in the command module. This was a significant discovery, as armalkalite is a mineral that at the time was completely unknown on Earth. These new minerals, including armalkalite, offered scientists back on Earth an unprecedented opportunity to deepen their understanding of the moon's geology and the broader processes that shape our solar system. Such discoveries weren't just scientific triumphs, but also symbolic ones. They epitomized the spirit of exploration and the desire to uncover the unknown that had driven the Apollo mission from the start. These discoveries, like the mission itself, were a testament to human curiosity and the thirst for knowledge. But what was happening back on Earth during this time? In the backdrop of the 1960s, the world was gripped by the Cold War, a tense ideological clash between the United States and the Soviet Union. 
This intense rivalry spilled over into outer space, sparking a heated competition we now know as the Space Race. Both superpowers were desperate to demonstrate their technological prowess and the superiority of their political systems. The Moon, an untrodden celestial body, became the ultimate finish line. For the United States, the Apollo moon landing was not just about scientific exploration and discovery, it was about winning this race. It was about proving to the world, and especially to the Soviets, that American ingenuity, determination and democratic ideals could accomplish what seemed impossible. The successful moon landing, therefore, was as much a geopolitical victory as it was a scientific achievement. The moon landing thus was not just a giant leap for mankind but also a decisive victory in the space race. So, how did this monumental event unfold? Let's rewind to the year 1961, when President Kennedy set the audacious goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. This led to the Apollo program's inception, which would change history forever. Fast forward to 1969, and the stage was set. On July 16th, the Apollo 11 spacecraft launched from Cape Kennedy, carrying astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Four days later, the lunar module, affectionately named Eagle, separated from the command module. As millions watched in anticipation, Armstrong reported, the Eagle has landed. The astronauts then took their historic first steps on the moon, exploring the sea of tranquility and discovering new minerals before reboarding the Eagle. The return journey commenced on July 21st, culminating in a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th. And so, on July 20th, 1969, the seemingly impossible became possible, and humanity set foot on the moon for the first time.